Hey everyone, welcome back to your JavaScript tutorial series. This video, we're gonna be talking a little bit about web application architectures. Now, it's not gonna be too crazy. I'm not gonna whip out no architectural diagrams or anything crazy. I just wanna give you guys enough to really understand where JavaScript fits in to the developer ecosystem. But before I go into that, I have something I need you guys to do. There is this developer bootcamp I need you guys to check out. It's called Dev Mountain, and they have generously sponsored this series and are helping make this happen. They have courses in web development, user experience design, iOS development, and software quality assurance. These are things you can take in person, and some of these you can take online. If you decide to take them in person, they have housing at no additional charge, and their goal is to help you take development concepts, apply them to real world problems, and get jobs in the industry. So this is a very career-centric bootcamp. Their goal is to help you start your career in software development. So definitely check out the link in the description and mention that you came from Caleb, <laughs> and they'll give you 250 bucks off your tuition. So don't be stuck watching tutorials for the rest of your life. Take the next step, go through this bootcamp, and you will not regret it. Now on to application architecture. What we've been building so far is the application front end. So if you go to your web browser and look at this file colon slash 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 blah 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 blah, <laughs> and we're literally just opening a file on our local computer. We're not using a web server. Sometimes when you're developing, you'll see something like localhost. And the way that works is you're feeding your files through a web server. And it's it's basically simulating the environment you would get when you go to a website. So for example, when I go to calebcurry.com, I am making a request to a web server. So when you go to this website, you're making a request to a server. And the server is basically listening for incoming requests. And when it gets a request, it sends a bunch of files down to the client. We're the client here because we're requesting this content. All of the stuff we're seeing here is part of the front end. The back end is what's responsible for communicating with the database. So I can't just go to this website and start editing blogs and deleting stuff, not without some server side processing. So consider the server like this gatekeeper between the front end pretty content stuff <laughs> and the very serious database stuff. The back end can be programmed in basically anything. This is PHP. If I was to build an app from scratch, I would consider JavaScript. You could also use something like C Sharp. Whatever it is, it doesn't really matter. All you need to know is that that is definitely different than the front end. The front end consists of JavaScript, HTML, and CSS. And I like to tinker around using this inspect capability. One thing that's super important to know is that all of the stuff on the front end is not secure. It's completely accessible to the user. All of it is visible right here. All the code, boom, right here. See these scripts? Yeah, you can right click open a new tab. Look at that, bunch of scripts. So you definitely don't wanna be storing anything secure in JavaScript. The other thing is that everything is editable. So for example, I can go to this email address button. I can inspect that and it comes up right here. And you can see there's this attribute type equals text. I could go in here and change it to password, for example. And now all of our content is supposedly hidden. So when you're typing in passwords into websites, it's really just a mask. It's to, it's to protect people from seeing your password who are looking over your shoulder. But don't trust any of the front end content to protect something sensitive because you can see I, it's all editable. So the overview of the structure is there's the database. The database is going to store all of the data for our application. So user accounts, transactions, profile settings, chat logs, whatever you might wanna store is going to go in the database. The back end is going to take requests from people going to the website and get certain things from the database and act as a gatekeeper between the two. The front end is where the users see things and are able to interact with your website. When you request a website, a bunch of stuff gets sent down from the server. So if you click this network tab and do a refresh, you can see basically the entire process of how a web application is downloaded. And you can see there's a lot of stuff. And this is the biggest thing that slows down websites is just downloading the information. And as a result, a lot of stuff is done to improve the speed of download. For example, you can minify or uglyify your code, which basically takes a bunch of JavaScript and condenses it down as much as possible by shrinking variable names, getting rid of white space, and then you basically get this jargled mess that no one can really read, but it still does the same stuff. So if you wanted to start a web app, a common way to do this is through a software as a service kind of system. So what is software as a service? 
basically, if you go to a website and you sign up and you're paying like a monthly fee to access their content and their website, that is software as a service. And typically this is going to be stored on some kind of platform that offers hosting for these websites. So some of the most common ones are AWS or Amazon Web Services. There's Microsoft Azure, there's the IBM Cloud, and a variety of other ones out there. This is if you really need fine tuning of your website and a lot of other capabilities. Sometimes it's cool just to go to a really simple shared hosting platform like Bluehost. This you can pay a couple bucks a month and you get a PHP website up and running. What you choose is up to you, but right now in the series, I'm not really interested in talking about deploying an application. I just wanna start getting applications applications written. <laughs> so that's all I got for this video. Hopefully that was a good introduction to the server client structure. And in the next video, we're going to be going into some more JavaScript concepts. So be sure to check it out and please be sure to subscribe. See you guys.